Caroline, you're muted. Hello. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much to be there. I know we have a small group on Zoom, but we have a lot of people who will watch um, the replay. We have over 100 people who said that they will attend. So thank you so much to be there today. Today is the first one of probably many. Uh, we will have a success story. And today we're starting with Brenda Brink. So Brenda, <laughs> welcome. Thank you. So Brenda, uh, so we will let you share. Uh, she will share her story. We'll have a couple of questions and at the end, if you have some question that you would like to address, um, please uh, go on. So Brenda, yes. first of all, uh, thank you so much to be here. But can you tell us a little bit more about you? I'm sorry, you cut out, go ahead. I said, yes, can you tell me a little bit more about you? Oh, sure. So um, I am, um, I have been an agent for 33 years. Um, my background was computer science before coming on board with New York Life. And um, I ended up in a town where there weren't a lot of jobs. And I had someone approach me that was a personal friend and happened to be my New York Life agent. And he went into management with New York Life. So he uh, knocked on my door and we started visiting and it took him took me about two years uh, to come on board. Um, but my main reason for doing that was um, as I looked around my family dynamics, um, no one really had any financial background. Um, and as I watched my mom and my grandma and um, their situations, I decided that I really wanted to be someone that came into people's lives and was um, there to help them make good financial decisions, um, help them plan for if someone passes away, help them plan for retirement, help them just take care, of, just do some good financial planning. And so um, as Dave and I visited and um, I, I knew what he did, but I didn't understand all the dynamics of it. And so we just began visiting. And um, two years later, I went to work for New York Life and that was 33 years ago in September. Wow, congratulations. What an amazing career. Thank um, you. And when we met, you share with me a, a sad, but at the same time, an amazing story that is reflecting mm -hmm. your why. Why are you doing this kind of career? Do you mind to share with us? I would why? love to. I would love to. So um, when I moved to Yakima, I knew about 10 people. So, you know, they tell you you should have 100 people. And it's like, I didn't have 100 people. Um, but I was introduced to this really wonderful couple. Um, she was 45 and he was 48. And I sat down with them and reviewed their situation. And it became apparent to me um, that if something were to happen to him, she, was, she would be in really a, a bad situation without enough life insurance without um, enough money to live on or retire. And so we worked together um, and um, I'll call them Barb and Bud. Uh, they were one of my first 20 clients in the business. Uh, just really sweet couple, didn't have any children. Um, so I understood that social security wasn't gonna come in the door for her at 45. And um, so we sat down, we worked together, we worked up a wonderful plan. And uh, lo and behold, my third year in the business, three years after I had written their life insurance, Bud had a massive heart attack and passed away at the age of 51. Uh, Barb was 48, a uh, single woman. And we put into, you know, I got the phone call from her in tears that um, he had passed away. So I went over to her house that night and began the process of um, just reassuring her that all the things that we had talked about and the things that we were going to do were going to come to come to fruition from the standpoint of making sure she was going to stay in her same world, which was really the major reasons why I went this route, you know, why the career change, um, because I really wanted to help people and I wanted to make sure live, die or quit, doesn't matter, that they were going to be taken care of. So uh, Barb and I worked together and um, helped her pay off her house, pay off her uh, debts, 
started saving for retirement. And at age 60, Barb, who worked at a packing warehouse where they pack apples, it's very hard work, long days, standing on your feet, hard times. And um, my mom had worked in a warehouse. And so I just have a lot of empathy for this couple. They were wonderful people. So um, Barb came to me and she said, Brenda, I want to retire. I, I want to travel. I want to do things. Can I do that? And I said, Barb, you have faithfully for the last 12 years done everything I've asked you to do, saving, um, not overspending, paying down your debt. I said, we're ready. We're, we can pull the trigger. And so at 60, even though she wasn't ready for Social Security yet, we were able to help her retire. And um, um, that, was a, that was a wonderful feeling uh, to be able to help her invest wisely and and um, be able to retire young. Um, then uh, fast forward just a little over, a um, little under five years later, I got a phone call from Barb's sister. They were at the hospital and Barb had had a heart attack and was up at the hospital and uh, they didn't expect her to make it. And her three sisters were up there. They had called me and asked me to come up to the hospital. Uh, Barb had been a part of our family. We'd had her over for uh Thanksgiving for Easter, because she was a widow, right? We wanted to love on her and help her. And um, so I was up at the hospital when they uh, let her go. And so um, because of the planning that we had done and I'd helped her do her wills, her hubby died without a will, that, that's a whole nother mess. Um, but we were able to open up 17 529 plans with $25,000 per child. And we have educated, I was telling um, Caroline this, we've educated five of them so far. We have 12 more to go. And that portfolio now is worth over a half a million dollars um, for those great nieces and nephews that were hers. And so it's, it's about, a, it's about um, helping people, helping them um, take care of their families, helping them leave a legacy helping them navigate life. And she had five years of fun. And I'm so thankful for that, that we were able to do that for her. So that's my why. You know, it was cemented really early in my career. When you pay your first death claim, there's nothing like it um, in terms of really understanding the magic and the power of life insurance and what an amazing tool it is to keep people in their same world. Um, and so, yeah, I love it. I, I love helping and uh, she was my first. And it was, you know, I've paid a lot of death claims since um, and there's, there's no better thing than delivering the right check. Um, I've had to deliver some that were not enough and I don't like that. They weren't my clients. I've just delivered the checks, but I don't, I, that's not a fun thing to do, so. But you yeah. know, Congratulations for doing this, but you know, this started because you were not shy to ask because sometimes when we're in sales, sometimes when we have this kind of career, we're, we're shy to ask because people has a bad perception of this industry. Mm. But yeah, because they, there's a perception of what they think we do versus what we really do and holding those hands. Um, walking people through determining the right amount of life insurance, talking to them about their hopes and dreams. Um, and so, you know, I just, I don't take it personal. If they say no, it's because they don't know me. <laughs> That's my first response. You don't know me. You don't know my heart. You don't know that I'm here to help. And um, if you want my help, I'm here. I'll help you every way I can. Um, but it, it really is about possessing that internal um br uh, the internal clock of understanding who you are and how you're going to help and that you're going to be true to yourself and you're going to be true to them so i just i find that um if they get to know me um they'll want to work with me and so it's just overcoming their perception of what they think we do so that's a good example. Thank you. And, you know, with the right planning, you're not helping only one person, you're helping multiple. So it's even you're giving back. This is amazing. Congratulations. Um, the other day you share with me, you have a slogan on your. 
Yeah, early oh. in my career, um, you know, I, I realized very quickly that every day I was unemployed um, when I showed up at the office because I was, you know, I didn't have um, a, what they call a, a great market. You know, if you, you looked at the names I had, I had 10 people um, and uh, those were all my relatives. <laughs> And so I, I had to develop a network. I had to develop a group of people and some uh, what we call center of influences and just people who loved you and appreciated you and wanted you to help their friends. So um, on my wall in my cubicle, uh, back, when, back when I first started, I had a little sign that had a sailboat on it. And it said, if it is to be, it's up to me. Um, it just helped remind me every day that nobody was responsible for my success or failure besides me. And, um, and my attitude is I'd never failed at anything and I wasn't gonna start now. Um, so it, it made it uh, easy for me to just look at that every day and go, yep, I, I need to make 20 phone calls this week. 10 will say yes. And I'll probably have five appointments and I'll, I'll write some business every week. And, and that's really, um, that was taught to me early. I'd never been in sales. You know, my background's computer science. Uh, most people would say, well, that's not a recipe for success. Um, but it but it is if you have the right attitude towards the people that you're helping. So the right mindset. And now that you're talking about your 20 calls early <laughs> in your career, what yeah. happened one night with your 20 calls? <laughs> because you have up and down in this career, any sales career, like you have up and down, especially at the beginning at the time that you're climbing this mountain, it's easy to, to get discouraged. So can you share with us what happened one night with your 20 calls that you have to do? Oh, it's funny. Um, so the first two years, I think, are definitely the hardest. And, um, you know, it depends on on your um, natural market and, and who you have. Um, but there, there was one night that um, I had 20 phone calls to make. And um, I at that point, I had um, two little boys and I was pregnant with my third. Um, so I, 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 when my oldest, my oldest was um, two and a half. And my middle boy was one when I went to work for New York Life. And then six months later, I got pregnant with number three. So I had three little boys under the age of four. Um, but this was, I, I was pregnant. Um, it was a Monday night. I have made phone calls on Monday nights for 33 years. I never fail to make my Monday night phone calls. It was the best night to catch people. And uh, so this Monday night, I had 20 names. I'm picking up the phone and I'm calling people. And um, I kept getting no's. And I got a few hell no's that night. And finally, about the 15th phone call, I'm, 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 I'm getting a little teary. And I'm thinking, this is no fun. Um, and I picked up the phone and I called my girlfriend, Debbie. And, I, and, <laughs> and she picked up the phone and I started to cry. And she goes, what's wrong? And I said, I have made 15 phone calls and gotten, and, and I just needed to talk to somebody who loves me. And she started laughing. And, and I said, this, you know, this is a hard night. Deb, I just really honestly needed to talk to somebody who knows me, who loves me, and uh, you're it. And she just started laughing. So we had a good visit. We talked about kids. We talked about life. And and then I said, okay, I got five more phone calls to make. And I hung up and I made those five more phone calls. I had 20 no's in one night. It's never happened to me again. Um, but it was pretty amazing. And, um, and you know, it's, I just, I told myself, I said, okay, I got 20 no's out of the way. That now means I need at least 10 to 20 yeses. And, uh, and, and that was probably the worst night I had in my career. And I was, um, I was less than one year in the business, um, but it was perseverance. And, um, and it, it's funny because I really, I told myself at the time, I said, they just don't know me. They don't know who I am. They don't know what I have to offer. And, uh, and I'm not going to let that get me down. And I didn't. I just kept moving on. So. And I love that. I share this many times with the clients, how the mindset is so the key to be mm -hmm. successful. And after this horrible night, 
you planned your career, 33 years, and now you're chairman. For those who are not in the insurance world, it's kind of the highest level, especially with New York Life. It's one of the highest uh, level of, of recognition. Um, how did you get to chairman? A lot of years of developing relationships. And um, so I've made counsel all but twice. And um, there's never, you know, my, my very first year I made it, my second year when I had my um, third son, I missed it by like $1,500, which may not sound like much, but it felt like a really long ways. Um, and then when my middle son was a senior in high school and I was chasing him all over the county and the state <laughs> playing basketball, because as a mom, that was my priority. I missed it again. But so I've made council 31 times, president's council, chairman's council this last year. And, and um, you know, I, I have to give credit to God. I, re I really feel like um, he was with me through that journey. Um, and also all the relationships over the years that I've built. I had um, a number of folks that I have been working, helping them with their 401ks for years. And um, I have a lot of referrals in this business. It's, um, it's a lot different. The longer you're in it, the better it gets because as you build a reputation, as you take care of people, your, your name gets out there and, and people say, you know who you need to talk to, you need to go visit with, you know, and it'll be you guys because you've built those relationships, you've taken care of people, you've done the right thing in the right way for the right reasons. And that comes back to you in spades. It really truly does. So I had uh, a number of cases that came my way um, and this year is going just as phenomenal. And it really truly is a lifetime of pouring my heart into my clients, their, uh, their planning, um, helping them through all kinds of um, things thick and thin. So just being there and walking out love that path. It. Yeah. So connect heart to heart with your client. Yes. I love it. This is how serve your client. This is how you're climbing. And of course, it's not just heart to heart. I guess you have, as you said, you have a Monday morning, Monday night, you have your discipline of doing your calls, mm -hmm. but what else do you do to be successful? Um, so one of the things that I did is I um, adopted Dan Sullivan's approach to planning my week. Um, and I, it's one of those things where if you don't have a plan, it, then you have no, you have no path. And so, um, you know, plan your work, work your plan. And for me, um, in about 1999, um, I had a, a situation where a lady came to work for me who worked for a chairman's and a president council agent. And she said, Brenda, you need to, here's what you need to do. You need to plan your week. Here's how to structure your week. And she did. She took me and um, revolutionized my process in that I have buffer days and I have focus days. On my focus days, it's appointments all day long, back to back. Um, and so I'll book um, anywhere between five and 10 appointments for that day on a Thursday. I work a half a day Monday and Monday night. I work a half a day Tuesday and I'm talking focus time. So there's go time, that's green. Those are my focus days. Um, the mornings are buffer time. That's phone calls. It's working on projects. It's preparing plans. It's reviewing portfolios. And so um, Monday mornings, Tuesday mornings, all day Wednesday are my um, buffer days. And then Tuesday, Monday afternoons, Tuesday afternoons, all day Thursday are focus days. And then Friday can be just a mixture. Um, and so it depends on the week. It depends on who I want to see. And um, I think it's really important to have that time that you dedicate so that you know I've got, I, I need to book five appointments, 10 appointments, whatever your number is. I know for me, um, they said if I made 20 phone calls, I'd book 10 appointments, I'd see five of them and I'd write half. Well, I'd write, I'd call 20 people, I'd get 10 appointments and I, it, you know, that most of the time I booked all 10. Um, and then I would, there were, you know, seven to eight apps that came out of that. So 
it's it's really a matter of uh, keeping track of your time and um, choosing to to structure it in a way that helps you be successful so that you don't fritter away your time. It's so easy to get caught up in emails and um, stuff, you know, but I was really very intentional and still am to this day with my, my schedule. If I brought up my schedule and showed you, the time is blocked out in my, um, in my program that keeps track of that. So, yep. I love it. I work the same way. I work the same way. I love it. Um, just last question before everybody else has other question. If you have one recommendation to everybody when you have your down or, you know, when uh, things are not going the way or you're behind your goals, what you will recommend to be at the top or what you will recommend to keep going? Um, so uh, over the years, I've done a lot of things um, motivationally um, to um, get into, um, you know, read a book that's motivational. Um, I have an app on my phone every day um, that I that I spend time in. Um, just for some people, it's affirmations. For me, it's it's time spending reading my Bible and remembering my focus and what's truly important. Um, and that is my guiding light for um, how I live life and how I treat my clients. And so it just reminds me that I'm a person of worth and I have so much to bring to the table. And um, it, what's going to happen is I'm going to find the people or the people are going to find me that I want and need to help. And so you're, you're not going to help everybody. Um, but what you'll find is that you... You will, um, you will gravitate towards certain kinds of people um, and it will just turn into a natural market and a natural nest and they will then direct you to other people that have like-mindedness um, and that will just bubble to the top. It just, it happens. So, you know, I, I think just remembering that you're a person of worth and you have so much to offer, um, that gives me motivation every day. Um, and when you've been doing it for a year or two and those phone calls start coming in and people say, so-and-so told me to call you. It's like, yes, thank you. And then you're moving on, right? And so you're, you're just, um, it gives you um, that boost to the confidence to say, I, I have value that I bring to the table and I'm here to help people. And then they start sending you nice notes and saying, thank you for your help. And you know, to me, that's the motivation that keeps me going is, is that knowing that I bring value to the table each and every day, each and every meeting. And uh, that's what I want to do. I think the one thing that you need to do, though, as an advisor to bring that value to the table is that you need to invest in yourself. And so very early in my career, I got started with my CLU and my CHFC, and I've, I just have continued um, I have my castle, I have my C, uh, RICP, I have my um, CLTC, Certified Long-Term Care Consultant. Um, and then I just got my Series 7 this summer um, after 33 years. I know, it's the hardest test I've ever taken. And uh, <laughs> next summer, I'm going to finish up my CFP. I just, I have one class to finish that up. So, yeah. And I so, think you told me the last 18 months, you've got a coach also. That's how I think it helped you to really go to the next step. It did, because one of the things that I figured, you know, and it's so funny because I went to um, a coaching. It's, it's called um, Wes Young. He's one of our top New York Life agents. And he, <laughs> yeah, isn't, he's just awesome. So I started doing that um, three years ago. Um, and because I heard Wes talk and it's like, you know, I've watched all these people over the years who've, who've gone from, you know, EC to PC to CC. How can they do that? And I can't. What, what is going on? So I decided to get involved in Wes Young's. And um, part of it was, um, as part of his uh, process, was um, a mind scan. And so, and then you go for the deep dive. You go to his place and you spend two days I think they may have it pared down to one now, but it was two days. 
and um, they take you through a bunch of information. Well, I sat right next to this gentleman who has been my, um, my coach for the last year and a half. Um, and so at any rate, he looked at my mind scan. He goes, wow, I've never seen a mind scan like that. And I started laughing. I said, well, is that a good thing or a bad thing? At any rate, it was kind of an opening and um, we visited. And one of the things I told him when I was sitting there, as I said, I know I have an issue with dealing with people with high net worth. I just do. I don't know what it is. I think in, in my own mind, I have limited myself. I've said, I don't know enough. I'm not good enough. I don't know how to talk to them. I said, I just need to learn how to do that because everyone else seems to have that gift and I don't. So what do I need to do? And it was, it was fun. I've had a great time. And then I've started working with this business coach and he's really helped me kind of uh, uncover my limiting beliefs and then overcome them. So working through that, but at the end of the day, it's it's about all those things, right? Understanding what you're, uh, what's holding you back, um, mm -hmm. how you can um, overcome that. Um, and I think a coach, when you're doing that one on one with a coach, it helps because you can be honest and transparent. You're never going to do it in a group of people. We're just not willing to be that vulnerable. Um, but it's different when you're one on one, and so. I have really appreciated my coach. I, I think coaches like you, Caroline, are worth your weight in gold because you help us break through those limits that we put on ourselves so that we can really take those next steps and reach for the stars and go, you know what? I am a chairman's council agent. Um, I had more people telling me that than I believed in it myself. So it's it's been fun to, to actually hit that. And now I'm pro rata for... Um, CC again, and it's like that's amazing. I'm I'm excited and um, and I'm just thankful and I'm grateful every day. Every day I wake up grateful and thankful. So, uh, congratulations! Seriously, you inspire. I know you inspire me, and I I'm pretty sure you inspire inspiring everybody. But seriously, <laughs> you have a great mindset, a great attitude. And we understand why you. you're at the top because just the way you talk, you have the right value. You're doing this for the right reason. So really congratulations for your experience, your career. It's amazing. And thank you so much for sharing.